Mr. Vice Rector, I have the honor to present to you Padi Jobo Lachofla with a request that you confer on him the degree Doctor of Commerce Honoris Causa. The decision by Council and Senate to award him this degree has been taken on the grounds of the following considerations. Ladies and gentlemen, as South Africa's Statistician General for the past 15 years, Mr. Lochla has made his mark as skilled innovator in his field of expertise, both locally and internationally. Through his enhancement of Statistics South Africa's internal capacity, as well as statistics policy and utilization in Africa, his name has become synonymous with unlocking data along with the human talent behind it. Born and bred in Lesotho, he studied statistics, population studies and management at the University of Lesotho, Ghana, the Witwatersrand and Harvard. Having left his home country for political reasons, in 1982, he was employed in the statistics office of the then Baputatswana, where he later became director. His inquiring mind did not go by unnoticed and he eventually moved to the Central Statistical Service in Pretoria as chief director of demographics, with responsibility for the census of 1996. When he was later appointed statistician general, he set himself the task of drastically improving statistics SA official skills in generating and using statistics. This has seen the forging of the innovative partnerships with local and international higher education institutions. For example, he initiated the Center for Regional and Urban Innovation and Statistical Exploration, CRUISE, at Stellenbosch University for the focused training of government officials. He has subsidized summer and winter schools at the Southern African Labor and Development Research Unit at the University of Cape Town, helped create the African Center for Analysis of Population at the University of Pennsylvania, and established winter schools along with the University of Michigan. And in the process has ensured the upskilling of officials in his organization in poverty, labor dynamics, and demographic studies, as well as survey methodologies. Staff members are also offered further study opportunities at institutions in Uganda, Tanzania, the Ivory Coast, and Egypt. His concern about the state of official statistics extends beyond South Africa. However, he has also made significant contributions in the rest of Africa and the world. As innovator in African statistics production, his appeal to fellow Africans led to, led to the birth of the African Symposium for Statistical Development in 2006. Chaired by Padi Laochla, the ASSD has facilitated vast progress in statistics policy on the continent, ensured successful census in most African nations in 2010, and pursues improved civil registration and vital statistics. His involvement further afield includes membership of the United Nations Expert Data Resolution Advisory Group and the United Nations Statistics Commission, and Vice Chairmanship of the International Statistical Institute. He's also an experienced advisor in conflict-ridden and vulnerable areas, including Sudan, Afghanistan, Iraq, and Cambodia. Mr. Vice Rector, please confer on Statistician General Padi Jobo Laochla the degree Doctor of Commerce, honoris causa for his innovative leadership and ingenious contribution to enhance statistics, South Africa's internal capacity, as well as statistics policy and utilization in Africa, and for his special focus on the development of human capital. Bali, Jobo, Lukoshla, I hereby confer on you the degree Doctor of Commerce, Honoros Causa. Congratulations from our university. Thank you very much. Yeah. Well done. Wonderful to have you here today. I'm um, not going to repeat Buddy's uh, bio, as I suppose that uh, all of the other guests here have read it already. So what I would do rather uh, is to talk to him about his, his personality and his person. Buddy was born 
in a small village in Lesotho uh, as the youngest of six children. He, be, he comes from a very remarkable family. His parents, parents were both uh, school teachers and his eldest brother studied law at Edinburgh and became Chief Justice of Lesotho. The other brother studied mathematics at Oxford and became Deputy Prime Minister of the country. One of his sisters studied mathematics at Bristol and the other one mathematics at Columbia University and the youngest became a teacher that was also trained in Britain. Now, 22 years ago, one afternoon, uh, before the uh, 1994 elections, I was unexpectedly uh, phoned by somebody who wanted to come and see me about something very urgently. A few days later, Paddy Lawata walked into my office and he told me that the 1994 elections were lying ahead and that there's a lot of work that needs to be done and that work needs to start right now. One of the uh, first issues that he mentioned that needed attention was the distortions that were created by apartheid in the district boundaries of our country. Uh, and he told me that he read my work, and that was surprising for a government official, uh, and he believed that I could uh, help him. So we started immediately. And a year or two later, I can't remember exactly how long that was, uh, the central government took notice of the work that was done uh, in our province. And Paddy Lotla got uh, catapulted from a small office there in Mabatu to senior position at the then Central Statistical Service. Soon after that, he became Statistician General of the organization. And this is a position that he has held for the past 15 years. He's a custodian of statistics and he has placed South Africa on the map in the world arena and has played a major role in advancing census taking and the use of statistics in policy making in Africa. Now, Paddy is probably the hardest worker that I've ever come across in my life. He simply never stops working and he seldom goes on holiday. And on a personal note, he likes phoning me on a Saturday afternoon <laughs> and usually as soon as the rugby match is about to start. <laughs> and he keeps on talking and I would be lucky to see the end of the game. So there's always an area in which one can improve, buddy. <laughs> now there are three kinds of people, those that make things happen, I call them the fighters, those that see things happening, the crawlers, and those that wonder what is happening, the snoozers. Now, Paddy is an innovator. Wherever Paddy is going, things are happening. And you must believe me, things are happening where he, where he is. He's a visionary and he's a fighter for the good cause. When Paddy arrives in a town, that town becomes a better place. I said it before and I'm going to repeat it here today. <coughs> if I were to go to war, the first person I would like to have next to me would be Paddy Lotla, because then I know that we're going to fight and we're going to win both the fight and the war. Uh, well, I 
I'm not sure I'm a bit overwhelmed. Yesterday, when I was uh, receiving the award, I have a terrible fear of heights. <laughs> and uh, the occasion was also overwhelming. So when I turned jelly on the knees, I was not sure whether it was the heights or the overwhelming nature of the occasion. Chancellor and Vice-Chancellor Vice of the University of Stellenbosch. I'm really overwhelmed by what Professor Kheer has said, a person I've known over the last 23 or so years. And indeed, it was the works that I read that attracted me to him. Dr. Cameron, my brother, said that I should pass his regards to you. Uh, the Honorable Chief Justice uh, is retired from uh, the High Court of the Sud. He said I should pass a message of gratitude to yourselves. I don't know where to start because I really honor the surprising honor that I got from the University of Stellenbosch. But sitting around the table with uh, Dr. Joan Rupert, I thought I should mention something that has uh, happened to me. Three things I want to talk about is the discussion that we had around the table. The second is the direction in which the world is moving and the role that we should be playing. And finally, I think, uh, is to say what are the implications for South Africa. And in very few minutes, let me say in 2014, I was quite happy and prepared to celebrate 100 years of statistical practice in South Africa. It is something that I pursued rigorously. And that was supposed to happen on the 7th of July, 14th of July, 2014. It preceded all the hashtag Stellenbosch must fall, hashtag this, hashtag that. But it was a vision that I pursued rigorously with my colleagues in the organization. But there was always a problem that I sensed. And one of my colleagues that we started the organization together, we locked hands on this matter. And because we, are, we enjoy frank talk with him, we were able to come to the real issues and we opened it up to the organization. And many thought that the organization was going to be paralyzed and broken. When we started the discussions in the open halls about 100 years or not, or 20 years, it was clear that 100 years was not going to fly. Then we started reflecting very hard on this and why has this not happened? I've worked hard in statistics. We've worked hard together with colleagues in statistics. But when we started analyzing the issues, it was clear that foreigners, that is like myself from the suit, black as I would be, and having worked very hard in that organization, whites, colors, and Indians were at ease with the 100 years but the majority, the blacks, were not. And the question was, having worked in this country for so many years, what fell on my blind spot that I couldn't see this coming? And we opened up the organization and said, what is it that we, who are not necessarily the majority in this country, not realizing? And what are the rules of engagement to rise to that and realize it? So, our hashtag, StatsSA, should fall started there. But StatsSA is not falling. It's rising to the occasion. And we are growing stronger and stronger by opening up that avenue to understand the depth and the damage that apartheid could have done in this country. And in fact, we accepted, upon my appointment as Statistician General of South Africa, that some of us who were black and were never subjected to apartheid were actually white. And we accepted that notion to try and understand what the taxonomy 
of the country has been. And that has helped us a lot in bringing an organization that is multicultural, very, very understanding of the depth of transformation and what has to happen. Having worked with Professor Feya was a serious eye opener. Because at the time when I went to see him, there was the SATO option that Book 2012 wanted to follow. And I asked him, I said, this SATO option doesn't work. What in terms of regional economy of the country should we pursue? And he opened up the space. I said to him, I think you should teach statisticians this thing that you are doing. It took a number of years, and in 2010, we opened the Center for Regional and Urban Innovation and Statistical Exploration here at Stellenbosch, where I sent my top layer of management in SA. And from that perspective, we are doing a lot more. Now the world. The world is in serious trouble. And I thought I listened very carefully and attentively to uh, Dr. Johan Rupert when he raised matters, technology, and Google. I served one of, as one of the 25 team members with the, of the Secretary General of the United Nations on matters that are revolution. And indeed, in this matter, there are deep issues that are very difficult. The governance of technology, the tyranny and the likely tyranny of technology and their statistics which will kill the democratic project of nations. We need to attend to that and pay serious attention to that. When we met in Gabon a few weeks ago, we petitioned the Secretary General of the United Nations to ensure that he invites, as recommended by us in our document, the well that counts, that he invites and convince a high-level team of people that have to look at the Global Partnership for Data and the World Forum on Data. It has been hijacked at the moment by technology and money, and it is going to kill the democratic project. If we don't attend to that, we are not going to succeed. And next year, in January, we will be petitioning the Secretary General to deal with this particular matter. If data is the new oil, we know what oil does. If data is the new thing, the new currency, we know what currencies do. If we don't attend to that, data and democracy will not sit together. And there'll be tyranny of data and tyranny of statistics. And it will kill the democratic rights of people. We need to deal with that. That's the next frontier that we are battling at the moment. Finally, Between Stellenbosch and Statistics South Africa, we have started a long journey through the Center for Regional and Urban Innovation and Statistical Exploration, led by Professor Feyer. And the one thing that we have to establish is the Regional Science Association that not only addresses issues on the in South Africa, but on the continent and globally. So I wish to thank uh, my late parents uh, who and um, would wake up in the morning, my father would say and quote from Lanzel Longfellow, say the great, the heights great men reach and keep were not by sudden flight, but they, while their companions slept, they toiled through the night. And I must thank my wife, my two, three boys are not here, uh, for ensuring that I could toil through the night and probably reach heights. Whether I've kept them, that is not clear, but they can only be kept by those that follow me. I thank you very much. <laughs>